This is the level 3 physics 2015 mecha mechanics exam. I'll just be working through question 1. Digital television in New Zealand can be accessed um, by using satellite dish pointed at a satellite in space. The satellite is used to, used to transmit the signals um, appears to say still above the equator. Um, that there tells us it's geostationary. And the satellite with a mass of 300 kgs, which is reasonable, is actually travelling around the Earth in a geostationary, or geostationary orbit at a radius of 4.22 times 10 to 7 metres from the centre of the Earth. So they've given us a distance from the so centre of the Earth. The meaning of that is it's the centre of the Earth's mass. Um, anyway, so question 1a, name the force that is keeping the satellite in the circular orbit and state the direction in which the force is acting. Um, the force is gravity, gravity, and it, the direction of the uh, force is acting is towards, towards the centre of the earth. So this this towards the centre of the earth is from the satellite's perspective. Um, so that's that's the force keeping the satellite in orbit. So that's the the force on the satellite, and that's pointing in towards the centre of the earth. If it was a force on the earth, it would be pointing towards the satellite, and it would be. It would be tiny compared to the mass of the Earth, but it would still be the same balancing of forces, and that would be Newton's third law. Anyway, calculate the force acting on the satellite. This is quite an easy one. If we turn to our formula sheet here, you'll notice that here we have the force of gravity, uh, Newton's gravitational constant, one of the masses, another mass, and this is just the separation distance between the two centre of masses, and it's squared r squared. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. Cool. So the forces on the satellite, F, G is equal to gravitational constant, large M, little m, divided by R squared, which is equal to, we have our gravitational constant up here, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. I'm not going to put the units in, in the calculation, but I'm going to make sure everything is to three, three significant figures. You'll notice here, Three, three significant figures, three significant figures, three significant figures, so on and so forth. There's three ZF. And it turns out most of the NCA exams um, that I've come across so far are all in three significant figures. So all your answers need to be in three significant figures. Anyway, times big M usually represents the larger math. So mass of the Earth, I've got up here 5.97. 0.97 times 10 to the power of... 24, and this is in kgs, and our mass of our satellite is 300 kgs, that's the second mass, that's mass 2, times 300, all divided by the radius squared, or the separation distance between the two centre of masses, and just double checking, they've given us the exact distance from the centre of the earth to the satellite they have good 4.22 times 10 to 7 and this equals if we plug this into our calculator 67.1 newtons which is not a bad amount that's a reasonable force right show that the speed of the satellite is 3.07 meters per second so that is about 3000 meters per second three times the speed of well, that's far more than three but 10 times the speed of sound. All right. So, in order for a satellite to remain in stationary orbit, the centripetal force, so the gravitational force, or the centripetal force has to equal, has to equal the gravitational force. I'll, just, I'll make these capitals, actually. And our centripetal force is mass times velocity squared divided by the radius this is just all. This is always a case. If you have something orbiting something else, um, so like planets and so on and so forth, the centripetal force. If this is geo geostationary orbit as well, um, centripetal force is equal to the gravitational uh, force in order for it to stay stationary. And this is equal to 
gravitational constant times big M, little m, divided by uh, squared. So right off the bat, we have uh, two formulas. We can do some cancellations. Um, this mass here, so this small m, always represents the mass that is orbiting the larger mass. So we can divide both sides by m, which just means we cancel that out. Or times both sides by r, which means this r and the r squared cancels out here. So we get v squared is equal to large the gravitational constant divided by the mass of the earth uh, and then divided by r let's just square root both sides there we go that finds our velocity so that shows us the speed of the satellite and let's just plug in some numbers so we get i'll just do this down here v is equal to square root gravitational constant is 6.6 .6. move that up a little bit uh, 7 times 10 to the 11, minus 11 I should say. I'm leaving the uh, units out just because it saves space. Times 5.79, which is the mass of the Earth, times 10 to the 24. Mass of the Earth again, which is given to us. Where's the mass of the Earth? There it is, 5.97 times 10 to the 24, I made a mistake, that should be 97, not 79, 97, here we go, times 10 to the 4, divided by the radius, which we determined was 4.22 times 10 to the power of 7, which is indeed equal to 3,070 meters, but 3.07 times 10 to the 3 meters per second, because it's velocity. Notice that my answer here again is in three significant figures, three significant figures. And have I answered the question? Yes, I've shown that the velocity is indeed three times the speed of sound, uh, ten times the speed of sound. Right. Question four, let's have a read. Kepler's law states that for any orbiting object, um, time or the, the period, so time of rotation squared is roughly equal to the radius cubed where r is the radius of the orbit and t is the time for the period of the orbit. So NASA used the robotic spacecraft to map the moon. Um, redundant information, lunar rear reconnaissance orbiter orbits the moon with an average height of 50 times 10 to the 3, that's an awkward way to write it, should be 5 times 10 to the 4 meters, that's going to trip you up, with a period of 6.78 times 10 to the 3 seconds. So. 6,780 seconds, and the moon has a radius of 1.74 times 10 to the 6. It's quite large. Right, so use Kepler's law to estimate the mass of the moon. In this answer, you should derive Kepler's laws and use Kepler's laws to determine the mass of the moon. So first off, we need to start, we need to derive Kepler's laws, and the only real way to do this is just to have a guess, um, just play around with some formulas. So the only real formulas involved, uh, you know, to keep keep something in stationary orbit, are centripetal force has to equal the gravitational force. You know, in order to keep something in orbit in geostationary orbit, um, this needs to be true. So in other words, our mass times velocity squared is equal to uh, divided by the radius is equal to again a constant mass of the main planet smaller mass divided by r and that should be squared right so let's just do some quick calculations and some manipulations so we'll get rid of the two masses uh, times both sides by m let me get rid of that so we get left with we should get left with the velocity squared you see that is equal to the gravitational constant times m divided by r Right, so here here we sort of got to a point where we're probably a bit stuck, and we need to think, well, how we have radius on one side, and we've got velocity on another. But we know about velocity. Velocity is just change in distance over change in time. So over the side here, we'll just write, you know, velocity is change in distance. I'll put change, but it's really just distance, change in time. We're going in a circle, so it's the distance is, you know, all the way around the planet. Um, planets are circular in shape, so... The distance around would just be 2 pi r, which is just circumference of a circle, divided by time. But in this case, I'll use period, so the big T, 
they both mean the same thing. So we have distance divided by time. Right, so we'll substitute that in. And this just comes with sort of mucking around with, with formulas and seeing how they work. So we got 2 pi uh, bracket period. Should be two big brackets over there. I'll move this up a bit. Squared is equal to gravity m over t. And let's just do some. Oh, let's what should we do? Uh, that's, that's R, I should say R. Right, let's square it out so we get move this over here. 2 squared, let's leave that as 2 squared for now. Pi squared, R squared, divided by period squared is equal to GM over R. Right, so we can just cross out that R times both sides by R. So it'll give us R cubed. And then we'll move this T squared. From this side over to that side, so let's cross that out. Well, times both sides by t squared, so we get t squared over there. Look at that. So we've showed that r cubed is roughly proportional, well, it's proportional with a whole lot of constants to the period squared. So thus r cubed is roughly proportional to t squared. These are just constants, they don't really change the relationship, they just add in. Constant now. So we've answered the first part, we've derived Kepler's law. Now use Kepler's law to determine the mass of the moon. Um, notice that you know the mass of the larger object, it doesn't really matter, but the la mass of the larger object here is the one that's that it's not you know, rotating around. I've explained that terribly. Um, anyway, so this is the mass that we're looking for. All we need to do is do some neat rearranging. So let's go, I'll just square out that two, so four pi squared r uh, cubed. Now what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to divide both sides by g, uh, the gravitational constant and time and the period squared. So g t squared is equal to m. And for the sake of not making the video run for too much longer, we have our period, I'll just write here, gravitational constant is 6.6. Double check that. Seven, yeah, six point six seven times ten to the. I'll move this up. Minus eleven. Leave the units out. Period. They've given us the period, and it is it is one point seven. Uh, no, no, take that back. Six point seven. Uh, six six point seven eight. Six point seven eight. Times 10 to the 3, and our radius is, let's move this up, our radius is, the radius is from the center of the moon to the satellite. So now we need to double check if they haven't tripped us up. So this this number here, so orbits the moon with an average height of 50 times 10 to the 3. So that's from the surface of the moon. And then we've got the radius of the moon as well. So we need to add those two numbers together to get from the very center of mass of the moon to the center of mass of the uh, satellite. So our radius, if we move up here, is 50. Notice the 50 as well, times 10 to 3. It's a silly way to do it. They're probably trying to stump you. Plus 1.74 times 10 to the 6. And if we plug all those numbers into our calculator, then that form our mass should equal... Let's double check. 7.38 times 10 to the 22 kgs. Now we just check, double check. Three, seven, three significant figures. Yep. Um, is this realistic? 7.38 times 10 to the 22. That's a pretty large number. Mass of a planet, you're probably looking about right. Um, if it was times 10 to the 10. Um, you know, if we compare it to the Earth as well, the Earth is. 10 to the 24, so it's got to be not close. It's got to be about a quarter of that or a third of that, which is which is close enough.